If you are a yoga teacher looking for poems for your yoga classes, or maybe you are a yogi and you want to incorporate some yoga, it, yoga poetry into your yoga classes, then you are going to love my interview with Dimitri today. I am Melissa from Yoga with Melissa, and today I am here with Dimitri. You may know me from my main yoga channel where I teach a lot of yin yoga and restorative yoga, yoga nidra and hatha yoga, and I always weave some poetry into my yoga classes. And if you're not already a subscriber here, we'd love to have you subscribed and come on over to my main channel so you can see I put poetry into my classes. And I know anybody who's uh, clicked on a video like this is very thoughtful. And conscientious and you're just gonna enjoy our time with Dimitri. Dimitri is an amazing human being. I've got to know him over the last um, year or so, maybe a couple of years. He is an amazing educator and poet and I most admire him for the way that he builds community around poetry. And so I'm really excited to have him here today. Make sure that you go over to his YouTube channel as well and subscribe there. It's YouTube slash com um, youtube.com slash Dimitri Ray's poet, and uh, we'll put the link in the show notes for that as well. And um, so, Dimitri, it's great to have you here. Hi, Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Mm -hmm. So, I thought we would start because this story. I think poets are just such great storytellers, mm -hmm. all in all. We try. Yeah, that's right? true. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we sweat over trying. Uh huh. Um, uh, the, the story that you tell about your path to becoming a poet, I mean, I don't, I don't know what video of, of yours I heard you tell that story, but it really brought a tear to my eye about the way you just kind of tried to resist your path for so long and the way it kept pulling you back in. And mm -hmm. I think that would be a great way for uh, people to get to know you. And I think it's just a really touching story to me. It's a really touching story. Thank you, thank you. Um, so yeah, so that, that video actually, uh, it was the Why I Am a Poet video. Um, and I was getting that from people for quite some time and like uh, students, cause I, I'm, a, I'm a professor at Rutgers University um, in Newark, New Jersey. And I also uh, incorporate poetry into my classes as a substitute teacher in the Newark public school system. And a lot of people ask like, you know, um, how did you get into poetry or uh, why did you get into poetry? And honestly, I, I like Melissa said, I, I tried to avoid it for a long time. Um, when I was in second grade, I, I, won, I won like this uh, Highlights competition. Highlights was like a, a young reader's magazine and I submitted a fiction story, a picture prompt, and it got picked up in Highlights. And it wasn't that big of a deal to me. Uh, I didn't even submit to it. It was like the second grade teacher that sent it in for me. And then like I took a state test and I got like a perfect score on a persuasive essay. And I like a 12 out of 12. Um, again, is something that came pretty naturally to me. So I didn't, I pretty much disregarded it and I kept playing Nintendo, right? <laughs> and then uh, in high school, I had, I had counselors tell me, you know, Dimitri, you should consider getting your degree in English or pursuing history or something like that. And I was like, what, why? To be a teacher? That doesn't make that much money. <laughs> I'm going to be a scientist, right? <laughs> so lo and behold, I took organic chemistry and I didn't do that well. <laughs> so uh, I, I bounced my majors around for a long time. And then I finally decided to say, okay, I'm going to give uh, English and literature a chance. And uh, the rest was history. And then uh, being inspired by like um, the emo music scene and hip hop and growing up in the inner city, uh, I, I, I would write and I didn't think much about my writing. And then one day a professor said, Hey, like, uh, did you call yourself a poet? And I was like, yeah, you know, I write here and there. And he's like, no, don't tell yourself you're a budding poet. You are a poet. And then he sat down with me and, uh, his name was Michael Van Kalberg, another amazing poet and critic. Uh, and he was like, listen, you have to apply to an MFA program. And I applied to an MFA program only writing Melissa for maybe like five or six months seriously at the time. And uh, just by the grace of the universe, I got in, you know, and then the rest and was not only did that. you get in. Come on, you're being modest. 
Uh, oh, so yeah, there's a, I, I am going to be modest. And now I feel like I'm not being so modest by saying this. And I always don't feel modest saying it, but they only accept eight people internationally, which is uh, insane. And it's a fully funded program. So uh, if you know anything about MFA programs or even grad programs, they're really yeah. hard to get into, yeah. uh, let alone get into a program that's fully funded. So yeah. um, I had, I, I did, ha I, I had to say I had some good people uh, from the university in my corner, um, but it was, it just felt like something that was meant to be. Mm -hmm. And it was still in Newark. I grew up in Newark. Um, you know, it's a socioeconomically dis disenfranchised kind of city. So there's a lot of other paths I could have taken. Um, and I'm so glad that uh, I found the university or the university found me and, and literature found me. And if you check out my work, a lot of my work, uh, although it, there is a fictionalized part of the speaker, a lot of that work, maybe 60 to 70% is actually factual. So if you look into my work, you can see a bit of, about my life. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so thanks for um, sharing that. I, I find that really inspiring. And just, you know, also sometimes we just try so hard to make our lives happen and really they're just kind of unfolding. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. Attempts to make them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, the reason why people are here is to um, find out how to choose yoga for choose yoga choose poetry <laughs> for their yoga classes because uh, uh -huh. this can this can be kind of difficult and I know even uh, myself and I read a lot of poetry uh, the thing that I find challenging about it uh, sometimes is that uh, poetry can be quite angsty <laughs> so, mm, then, yes. and then, so then you got everybody in shavasana and you know you think mm, can't read that in shavasana right <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> i got everybody in that bliss place i don't know, <laughs> I don't know really want to take them there right now so, i don't know maybe that's people's problems or or yeah. uh, maybe uh, people have this also i think sometimes people have this idea about what poetry was in high school <laughs> uh-huh uh-huh and I'm like in my mid 40s. So that would be like what poetry was when I was in high school 30 years ago, right? Right, right. It's very different, I think, than what it is now. But um, and people kind of have these hang ups too. So maybe yeah. that's kind of the baggage they're pulling along. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know that when I say I'm going to read poems, like people that are new to my classes are like, oh, I don't like poetry. But usually very quickly they change their minds. Uh -huh. And then they're like, oh, I love poetry. So. Uh, you know, right. what advice do you have for finding poetry and choosing poetry? I, I think always a good conversation, uh, <laughs> uh, always a good place to start in these conversations is like, what is poetry, right? So uh, there are a lot of misconceptions of what poetry is, depending on how you came to it. So uh, I know a lot of people in high school, when they come to poetry, uh, they're coming to like the greats. So they're coming to Keats, they're coming to Yeats, they're coming to Shakespeare, right? Mm -hmm. uh, some, some places, uh, I, I know in America, a lot of U.S. places get Edgar Allan Poe. I don't know, do they, do they get Poe in Canada as well? Uh, yes. You know? Okay, so Poe, and then you'll have Dickinson, and, mm -hmm. and then you'll have some of the American greats. Then if you're lucky, if you get like a, a contemporary uh, Engl uh, American lit class, you might get like Ginsburg and like Richard Hugo and maybe uh, Kerouac, right? Mm -hmm. um, and to talking about some of the American poets, and I know uh, there's a there's a slew of Canadian poets. When mm -hmm. you started when you started messaging me uh, all these poets that you were reading the other day, I, know. I started looking them up. I know, I was like, wow, it's so great, like and even just the difference other... between. The West Coast and the East Coast is like yes. huge, isn't it? It is insane. I, it I is insane it. how the landscape. Like cross yeah. <laughs> right, right. Are you reading so Jen's Vicky yet? I am. She's I am. amazing, I right? Am. Yeah, she's really awesome. Did you know um, her before me? I didn't. I didn't. I know. It's yeah. And you know that happens. That happens all the time. Even when um, even when I'm talking to other poets and there's poets that I should know, and they're like, "Oh, like, do you know this person?" I'm like, "No, but I am going to." Right. And that's the great thing about poetry that uh, it comes in such quick bursts that mm -hmm. you are able to kind of uh, sit and sample. Yeah. You're, you're able to sit and sample a bunch of other writers. But yes, the misconceptions of poetry. So yeah. uh, you get you get hung up on all of the classics, a lot of people that are writing in like iambic pentameter or mm. sonnets mm -hmm. or language that is a bit outdated. So when you come to a poem and you're like, oh, we're gonna go over poetry, you know, you think you're gonna do like Williams, uh, uh, William Shakespeare's 100 and something sonnets, right? His, his mm -hmm. 100 and something love sonnets. 
Um, and there is this other side of poetry that is contemporarily known now that is, um, that talks a lot about like the pain body, the trauma, right? Um, and they, you have to notice that there's a balance between the two, uh, that there <laughs> is, is ground? yes, there's a middle ground. <laughs> so there is like, there's, there's beauty in the trauma and there's trauma in the beauty and there's contem contemporaneous thought processes in the older poems. And there's a lot of things that we use in newer poems that we are pulling back from like 200, 300, 400 years ago. So it is trying to find this middle ground in terms of uh, uh, what you like. And I always tell everyone there's a poem for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, you, you can't put a label on poetry because poetry is ever expansive. It can't be put in a box, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, so when we're talking about uh, Savasana, right? Yeah, corpse pose. Or All right, so corpse pose. I mean, I think that's... That's often a place where, if we looked at kind of any yoga class, mm -hmm. it's probably a place where a lot of people would think, okay, here's a good spot to read a poem. Right, right, okay. <laughs> um, so what is your experience in uh, using the poems uh, during the corpse pose? Like what, 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 uh, what are your go-to sentiments? What, what, what is your thought process about going into it? Hmm. Um, I want to pick your brain for a sec if you yeah, don't mind. Okay. So it depends mm -hmm. on the theme of my class. Okay. But a lot of times I'm looking for a sense of expansiveness mm -hmm. and openness, um, a sense of, yeah, kind of opening to what is. I like the idea of, of tension and the beauty, connecting with uh, beauty. But yeah, there, there needs to be some kind of layer of tension to it. I often go mm -hmm. to Nature poetry seems to be good for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's really good. Um, I'm trying to explain this without going to the particular poets that I always go to. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. And I mean, if, if you need to say that to get there, that's fine also. Because um, I'm pretty sure there's going to be people that might not be yeah. using the poets you're using. So the poets that I mm -hmm. often go to, that I, I really go to, and I can explain why. Um, so exa for example, Mary Oliver is just like so easy to go to mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. she uses, she has this really great intersection of, of nature and spirituality and her poetic turns are just so subtle, mm. like so subtle that they're almost not there. <laughs> so mm -hmm. then there's nothing overly disruptive there when you've got everybody lying back in Shavasana. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And then I guess the, the other thing is, you know, when, when, we, when, I took, uh, when I did my training with Phoenix Rising Yoga Therapy, we were encouraged to take quotes and poems. And then if things were not sitting right, we were encouraged to um, change them. Mm. And, and even say, and say that this was uh, based on this poem, that w but that we had taken liberty with it for the sake mm. of this class or whatever. Yeah. Right. And there's also, there's also the whole idea of universality, right? And like um, the idea of the poem being expansive. And when you are creating your own mantra for the day, right? Um, who's to say your mantra is in a poem, right? Uh, what's wrong with everyone kind of uh, latching on to maybe a, a phrase or several keywords and kind of repeating that to themselves mm -hmm. while they are in that while they are in mm -hmm. that corpse pose, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe uh, whatever the theme is for yoga that day, kind of try to try to delineate the conversation into a couple of keywords or just this one word you recite. And um, mm -hmm. I, I also kind of like this process of. Um, of like it's kind of like the chain mail poem uh, the stream of consciousness poem you think of one word and then that word gives birth to a phrase and it gives birth to another phrase and uh it's kind of just like a, a mental exercise to see what you can come up with in the mind um and in that court in that corpse pose you, you know it could your, your mind can go anywhere in, in, in that corpse pose which is interesting um what i did want to say before i thought about that though when i when i was thinking about this video and i was like oh man what what a what kind of poems can you meditate on and i think ars poetica is the perfect now for people who aren't familiar with the ars poetica and ars poetica is literally a poem about what a poem is mm. right and mm. as as poets we are constantly trying <laughs> To, to, to explain life, you know, mm -hmm. ex explain the, the, the most minute images and descriptions. And one thing that has bothered or 
has amused poets for centuries is the idea of what a poem is. And people have been trying to explain what that is for centuries. Mm -hmm. um, the, the same way people try to determine what is one state of nirvana, what's one state of zen, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think if we always try, at, at least when I sit down and write, I'm always trying to think, well, what is a poem? How can I use those rules uh, of a poem to break those rules of a poem? Mm -hmm. um, the same way of who are who is the the, the I, right? Who is the yeah. self? Um, and not who is the self as the body, uh, like um, who is the YouTuber, who is the worker, who is the parent, mm -hmm. but who are we really? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we always have to be thinking of uh, when we're trying to do poems. And I do have an example at some point, if we can get to an artist poetic poem, that I think would be perfect uh, for your class. Okay, go for it. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> this actually comes from the anthology Poetry Like Bread. Um, it's by Curbstone Press. Um, it is now out of print, but you can mm -hmm. still get some on Amazon, and it's edited by Puerto Rican poet Martin Espada. Um, so it's an anthology of a, of a bunch of different Latin American poets. The poet that I wanted to read from was uh, Roque Dalton, uh, which is a Central American poet. Um, and mm -hmm. he came up with the phrase poetry like bread. And it's basically uh, the idea of poetry being uh, consumed as nourishment and as something to sustain, mm -hmm. right? Sustenance. So this poem is called Like You. Like you, I love love life the sweet smell of things the sky blue landscape of january days and my blood boils up and i laugh through eyes that have known the buds of tears i believe the world is beautiful and that poetry like bread is for everyone and that my veins don't end in me but in the unanimous blood of those who struggle for life for love, little things, landscape and bread, the poetry of everyone. Hmm. That's great. Yeah, so that was actually uh, translated by uh, Jack Hirschman. Mm. Uh, it was originally in Spanish. Um, but yeah, and uh, I learned about that poem during one of my undergraduate creative writing classes. And it was actually an exercise in Ars Poetica. So it was a uh, what did poetry mean to us and where could we take a poem? And uh, I just, I just love the idea of uh, poetry being like bread because no matter where you are on this planet, uh, uh, wh whether, it, whether uh, we know now how nutritionally dense it is or not, uh, bread is something that could sustain a world, you know, mm -hmm. so kind of like what poetry can. And I think in any poetry collection or in any poetry anthology, you're going to find poems about poems. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I've actually always been quick to discount those poems because I'm like, oh God, poets already always write poems about poems, but they're, right. they're actually the poems that are about, now you've opened my eyes to them a, little, a lot more, mm -hmm. <laughs> that they're about life and the meaning of life and like mm -hmm. who we are. They're, they're they are actually really great poems yeah. for Shavasana. And it's like, I mean, if you kind of think about it, uh, there's two things. Uh, I feel like every poem is an artist poetica, you know, mm -hmm. because like we, we are poetry, we are what exists, right? Mm -hmm. So if, we're, if there's a poem about life, it's a poem about a poem. Mm -hmm. um, and every poem is a love poem, whether you like it or not. If it's a poem about hate, if you don't like your poem, it's still a love poem because love is just this really intense feeling, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's uh, anything you put energy to, you know, uh, coming to the mat, coming to the page, um, the yoga mat, you know, I, either or, there's still a focus that is happening. There's still mm -hmm. a love and a yearning that's going into that. So yeah, um, poetry's awesome, isn't it, guys? <laughs> I, I think it's so. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think so. Um, so did you, I, I, I want to keep the interview fairly short, but did you have anything else that you wanted to make sure, you know, any words of wisdom that you wanted to impart uh, the listeners? Um, any words of wisdom that I could tell uh, the listeners besides everything else I said for this interview and things I want to say for the second interview before I run out of things to say? Hmm, let me see. <laughs> um, <laughs> defi definitely, I, I would say that um, art, art is a meditative practice, even if it isn't poetry. Um, 
Yeah. Whatever. And let's, how about we leave it at that? Cause I think we're going to get into that. Mm. And the other one. Yeah, actually, I, I want to so, save right? that for another inter- interview okay. with you. Yeah, for sure. Okay. That's yeah. fine. We'll save that one. We're going to save right. something for later. I'm okay. not going to give it all away today. <laughs> all right. All right. See, and, and that's the thing. I just want to like word vomit. Yeah. Information. Well, you yeah. know, you're a writer. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, Melissa's going to get to me in half an hour. Let me get everything in existence that I know, I know. down on this paper. I used to feel like I had to do that too when I first started yeah. teaching. I would like give everybody everything. I do a class on hips and I give everything I knew, mm. every pose in the whole world about hips. And then I realized like after a while, especially once you start teaching online, you're like, oh, I'm going to be here for a while. I'm going to get to see these people again. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've made that mistake teaching also. Yeah. Um, I, I, still make, I still make that mistake on YouTube. Oh, man, my videos are like so long before I start cutting or I get in front of a camera and then yeah. I forget all Guess the words. Guess what? You have to make a video every like week. And so, yeah, you can relax a little. <laughs> you know, and I have tried. I, I've tried to, to stick to the video a week thing and I just, I'm not that great <laughs> at that, at that. Um, just trying to get a video up every week. Uh, but it's just like trying to get to the mat or trying to get to the page. You just got to show up yeah. and, and do it. Okay, everybody, yeah. give give us a thumbs up. Give Demetrius a thumbs up for being here and put... Um, now I have some ideas on how to choose a poem for my yoga class. And if not, ask the questions and we'll be happy to answer in the comments. And be sure to go over to Dimitri's channel and subscribe to him. And we'd love to have you as a subscriber here as well. And we will see you next time. We're going to have Dimitri back uh, to answer some questions about um, what happens when that... You've been practicing for a while, and then the inspiration comes for you to be your own writer. Okay, Mm. thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Bye. Bye.